Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Tuesday the 30th of September 2025. One day to go until the official start of storm season and thunderstorms are forecast to kick off right on Q Wednesday and Thursday this week. We're looking at a thunderstorm outbreak through southeast Queensland and parts of south central Queensland. We've also got a little bit of rainfall on the forecast across the top end of Queensland and extending into the Northern Territory as well and the next thunderstorm outbreak on the forecast out to the 15th of October or so. All the details on these events plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning over in Southeast Queensland. Currently, we do have a weak low pressure system, and I mean a very weak low pressure system situated in the southern parts of the Coral Sea offshore from about Rockhampton. A few light showers are possible later this afternoon and this evening around the central coast of Queensland, but the main talking point through Southeast Queensland is, of course, the storm chances through tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. The best chance of thunderstorms will be over the granite belt into the Darling Downs area, and then through parts the northern Sunshine Coast and through the central coast of Queensland, or the Capricorna coast of Queensland, rather, with places like Bundaberg, Gladstone, Toowoomba, Kingaroy, Gympie, Harvey Bay, all looking at the good chance of thunderstorms through Wednesday and also through Thursday. Let's talk about them right now. So, as you can see on the convective, on the uh, standard forecast modelling here from the East Mluf, this is the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, you can see we are expecting a few thunderstorms to fire up here and there through parts of southeast and south central Queensland, but especially over the border into New South Wales through early tomorrow afternoon into early tomorrow evening. It definitely looks like the southern parts of the mid-north coast around Taree and then further inland to Tamworth and Armadale will be a good chance of seeing thunderstorms tomorrow. Very favourable conditions and some pretty healthy convective available potential energy values through tomorrow afternoon in this part of New South Wales as well. So this could be a bit of a wild card spot to watch. A few thunderstorms possible through the southern parts of the mid-north coast and a few thunderstorms that could go severe there as well. Over into Queensland though, it'll be locations out towards the west of Warwick and Toowoomba. Uh, the the best chance of thunderstorms will actually be towards the northwest of Toowoomba in a line between Toowoomba out to about Rolleston and Room Chinchilla, all looking at a chance of thunderstorms through tomorrow afternoon and evening, but it is a very limited risk. Now, the forecast for Wednesday has been knocked down consistently for the last couple of days, and it's really kind of a fringe chance of seeing good thunderstorms through tomorrow, and a highly unlikely chance of seeing proper severe thunderstorms as well developing in this part of Queensland. It looks like all of the energy slides offshore, which you can see out here, some good thunderstorms forecast well offshore from the Queensland coast. But yeah, in terms of the solid chance of thunderstorms through this part of Queensland, it's a very remote uh, outlook at this point in time. Convective available potential energy values, which is the energy in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to make the most of, are going to be there. There are some relatively decent numbers through Queensland, some better numbers actually down around uh, Tauri and Kamsi in New South Wales, and that's why there is a bit of a thunderstorm chance there now. Uh, but in terms of humidity values, and uh, when we're talking about mid-level humidity, there's going to be a lot of dry air in the environment through early tomorrow afternoon, especially into the low level. Once we get up into the mid-levels, there is a little bit of an increase in humidity, but overall a very hostile environment for thunderstorms to develop in. So not looking too favourable for tomorrow. And in terms of chances for Brisbane and the Gold Coast Wednesday, and also for Thursday by extension to that, a very limited chance of thunderstorms through the Brisbane and the Gold Coast metro areas. This is not going to be an outbreak uh, worth even mentioning or uh, worrying about in the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area. Pushing this out to Thursday, thunderstorm chances actually have gotten a little bit better in the last couple of days, to be honest, for the Capricorn coastline. And I've been told quite a lot over on Facebook that they're not going to happen, they're just not going to happen, but the conditions are going to be there through Thursday uh, early afternoon, especially between about 1 o'clock and about 5 o'clock in the afternoon for locations between Gladstone and Agnes Water, down through Bundaberg and Harvey Bay and down to about Noosa or so on the central Sunshine Coast. Don't get me wrong, this is a very fringe chance of thunderstorms and they're going to only develop within about 30 or 40 kilometres from the coastline so if you live inland, the chance of thunderstorms are very unlikely and that includes places such as Dingo, Billawilla, Ebsvold and then down to Kingaroy on Thursday. Thunderstorm chances very, very remote at this point in time, but the conditions are going to be there. We've got high convective available potential energy values through early Thursday afternoon. You can see these numbers here well above 2,000 for the first time this season. That is pretty good and some pretty good conditions there for thunderstorms. And to be honest, whilst humidity values aren't looking that good uh, further inland, they're looking okay. They're looking decent enough around the coastline to spark up a few thunderstorms, especially into the uh, mid-levels or the lower mid-levels above about 2,000 metres. But once we get around that sort of uh, four to 600 or 700 HPA range uh, where the uh, humidity values become very important. We do have some more decent numbers uh, in the atmosphere here between 50 to 70%, which is enough to get a severe thunderstorm outbreak going. Uh, don't get me wrong, this is gonna be a very fringe outbreak as well, if you could even call it an outbreak. And again, thunderstorms will only occur around the coastline and we could probably count on our fingers on one hand even how many thunderstorms and how many severe thunderstorms are gonna develop through Thursday afternoon and evening. 
but there could be some other conditions are going to be there for them. Plenty of heat, plenty of humidity, plenty of instability. It's just going to be a matter of if they can actually develop uh, in that very small area along the coastline that's going to have those favorable conditions. That Goldilocks zone, it is a very, very fine line, that's for sure. Uh, one thing that I do would like to say for Wednesday uh, is that we are looking at a bit of an upper level cloud band moving through on Wednesday afternoon uh, or through Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon. Have a look at this. So this is a look at high cloud here and we're looking at almost complete coverage through parts of southeastern Queensland. So if you're wondering why that thunderstorm outbreak for Wednesday, which was actually looking very promising a few days ago, has now been completely cancelled from the forecast, it's because we have a lot of high cloud moving through southeast Queensland and that's just going to pre uh, prohibit uh, uh, instability, uh, not instability, evaporation from the ground through southeast Queensland and really prevent those thunderstorms from getting off the ground, which is why we're not looking at a widespread high chance of severe thunderstorm activity through Wednesday. And basically the only place that is able to get uh, decent amounts of sunlight onto them through tomorrow uh, morning into tomorrow afternoon, which will kick off the thunderstorm outbreak, is over the border into New South Wales, through the south parts of the mid north coast and into the northern regions, the Hunter region. So that's where the thunderstorms will happen tomorrow if they are going to happen and through Queensland, very remote chance at this point in time. In fact, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised surprised if we saw nothing through Queensland through tomorrow afternoon and evening leaving Thursday, the only day of seeing potential uh, or seeing potential for decent severe thunderstorms developing through Queensland's central coast. But yeah, interesting stuff. There's a lot of moving parts to this forecast. It most certainly is one that's keeping me on my toes. That's for sure. A whole lot of moving parts. In terms of the long range outlook, you can see after Thursday, we're not talking about anything too crazy for an extended period of time, to be honest, right out to about the 10th of uh, October for Queensland when rainfall does begin to pipe up into the tropical regions and then potentially a severe thunderstorm outbreak through parts of central and southeastern Queensland after about the 11th of October or so and an increase in shower and storm activity through the Cape York Peninsula as well. I'll get to the rainfall in just a few seconds. I would like to talk about the uh, thunderstorm potential through south central and southeastern Queensland after about the 11th of October. Now keep in mind we are looking quite long range at this point in time so these forecasts should be taken with a rather hefty pinch of salt but it looks like through uh, the 12th of October we get our first chance of proper thunderstorms developing through southern Queensland and then especially through the 13th of October and the 14th of October good severe thunderstorms are going to become possible through the Capricorna coastline and then by extension up maybe into the Burdekin River catchment as well. Southeast Queensland will have a chance of thunderstorm activity but it doesn't look like there's going to be enough heat uh, in the atmosphere to really develop severe thunderstorms through the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area but that's just my take on it and that's very likely to change or evolve at least in some way over the next couple of days but yeah definitely going to be a time to watch between the 11th of October out to about the 15th of October. We've been talking about this window for the last two weeks or so as being a window for severe thunderstorm potential through this part of Queensland. And whilst the forecast has definitely been reduced in terms of severity and extensiveness for this severe thunderstorm outbreak, if it does even get off the ground, we're still most certainly talking about a thunderstorm outbreak or a potential for a thunderstorm outbreak around the 12th, 13th, 14th and 15th of October. Think back to my wet season forecast, which I recorded in late August of this year, saying that the Capricorn coastline was going to be a wild card for thunderstorm activity. Well, I don't want to toot my own horn, but it certainly is shaping up to be that way, which is fantastic to see. It means that the forecast has been right once again. But for the Capricorn coastline, again, thunderstorm potential is going to be there for the 13th and the 14th of uh, uh, October uh, in a pretty significant fashion as well. And it's pretty much the only place in Queensland that's going to be seeing thunderstorms out to about the 15th of October uh, in terms of storm season. So we're definitely talking about the Capricorn coastline leading the charge with thunderstorm activity and convective available potential energy value normally do really pick up regardless of how things pan out in terms of if there's drivers or not after around the 10th of October for Queensland. So they're not likely to be any concern and already looking pretty healthy. Some of these numbers here that we're beginning to see developing through parts of central Queensland around the 13th and the 14th of October. So definitely getting ourselves geared up for a good thunderstorm outbreak. And whilst we're talking about convective available potential energy values, this is about the ceiling of what we can see around Australia up to about 6,000 joules per kilogram uh, of available energy in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to make the uh, most of this happens around the Northern Territory in WA and it's an ongoing thing, a reoccurring thing uh, from about October right out to about April or May. Plenty of energy in the atmosphere up here. We can see those numbers move into Queensland, especially in the southern or the southeastern parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Some of the times those numbers get dragged down in towards central Queensland, uh, but it is exceedingly rare. And normally when that happens, we do see a pretty gnarly outbreak of thunderstorms on our way. But I just thought that was an interesting feature worth mentioning. Later on into the forecast period, you can see rainfall does return to 
northern Queensland, not in a very significant capacity, but you can actually see some bigger accumulations through the northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula. The Casper Coast and the Daintree Rainforest still, for the most part, remaining dry. And to be honest, we're not expecting good rainfall to develop there until about late October into early November, with December and January of, the, uh, of this year and next year being highlighted as extremely wet periods or extremely wet windows for far northern Queensland. The other major forecast modelling not really picking up on the long range forecast for rainfall at this point in time and then other forecast models don't really go out that far but we will be talking about a bit of a surge in moisture through parts of the Coral Sea not necessarily a low pressure system but definitely a surge in shower uh, activity and moisture activity through the Coral Sea after about the 8th or the 9th of October which will likely lead to 20 to 50 millimetres of rainfall falling each day for about a week straight across parts of the Cape York Peninsula interesting stuff and interesting times ahead in terms of other interesting features happening around Australia, probably our last time that we need to properly take a look at winter weather, but we have had a decently strong cold front move through South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania overnight. It hasn't poured too much in the way of rainfall to where uh, the rainfall was actually really needed through South Australia, but widespread falls between 10 to 30 millimetres on mainland Australia and some isolated falls to 60 millimetres through parts of Tassie have been reported overnight. And we do have some strong wind gusts here and there as well, especially through Victoria and into the higher elevations of Victoria. Those wind gusts have been quite fresh overnight. We're also talking about a remote chance of snowfall through this weekend. We can still see snow at this time of the year into, uh, not this weekend, rather through this week. Uh, we can still see snow this time of the year through parts of Victoria and New South Wales. It's not unheard of, that's for sure, but certainly accumulations do begin to get a lot lighter. And this is definitely the heaviest snow for early October that I've seen on the forecast in quite a few years, with a potential for up to 15 centimetres falling through Victoria and New South Wales, with the snowiest days expected to occur on Thursday and Friday as a week cold front blows through uh, this part of Australia. But yeah, definitely Wednesday night into Thursday and then into early Friday morning will be the chance of snowfall through parts of New South Wales and Victoria. Temperatures will fall close to zero, if not below zero above certain elevations. And with showers moving through, this chance of snow will be there. But yeah, in terms of winter weather, but that's probably going to do it for a winter weather outlook. Uh, there's not an awful lot more to be talking about. Still stock standard stuff at this time of the year. And given the reception of the SSW video that I made yesterday, which you can watch after this one, uh, we'll make an update on the Southern Annular Mode and what actually happens in the Southern Annular I'll work on it today and that'll come out maybe later this week or into early this weekend. But on that note, that's going to have to do it for me today. I do hope you found this video enjoyable and informative. And if you have, then please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not on the show without them. And of course, their support is, as always, massively appreciated. But let's bring on summer. Let's bring on storm season. I'll see you tomorrow for the official start of storm season 2025-26. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.